Double Dubs Online, how is it going, everybody? Okay, so we are gonna talk about um, something called Board State now. What is Board State and why is it important? Okay, basically the idea of Board State is it's how you win, okay? Now, you know, we can't, there's, there's no arguing. The way to end the game is for one of the two players, be it to yourself or them, to to go down to zero life that's that's how you end the game but how do you win the game you win the game by always being a step ahead of your opponent in some some way you either draw more cards or you kill something kill stuff faster or you uh you build a bigger board state or you just kind of outmaneuver them in like you know control situations and all that all that jazz Yes, there are some times when you just attack, attack, attack their face and just bleh, they're dead. But, um, ooh, it's more of like a, you gotta be playing this game for a while in order to assemble something that's gonna be able to do that. So, we are just gonna be talking about like a mid-range style board state. Very simple, very basic, and how that works, okay? So, without further ado, I'm going to become really tiny and I'm gonna go right up here, okay? Okay, now, now, now I'm up there, so um, <laughs> so now we're going to talk about how do you maintain a board state with the creatures that you have. So, um, and this is going to be like basic stuff. So, there are two ways that you can really maintain board state with creatures. One is utilize taunt minions, and two is put more dudes on, on the board with like that dudes that make more dudes. So like, um, you know, obviously you got your taunt minion, the... The Frostwolf Grunt, or you have the Murloc Tidehunter. Now, the Murloc Tidehunter, it summons a 1-1 dude. So you're getting more for your buck. Granted though, let's, let's take a look at what you are actually getting, because this is something that I want you to think about whenever you are utilizing any kind of battle cry put a thing into play, okay? So you've got this. It's two, two mana cost for 2-1, okay? And you're putting a 1-1 in. This is a total of five stats. And it, it, on two bodies. It's five stats on two bodies. How it's spread apart, it's two toughness and three power. Bloodfin Raptor does the exact same thing. Now, it's just on one body. Now, in, in the Tide Hunter's case, you, you, you gotta kinda look at it like, okay, so is this really gonna last longer than the Bloodfin Raptor? In some cases, absolutely not. In other cases, yeah, it is. It's gonna last way longer. But you kind of gotta really think about that. Which do you really want to have? Is is it is you are you gonna use a slot on a tide hunter? Obviously you're not, cause a terrible card. But just be thinking about that sort of thing. Think about what you're getting out of your mana. Um, here's here's a very good example of something like that. There's a Chillwind Yeti, which is a four five for four, versus the drag Dragonling Mechanic, which is a two four plus a two one for four. Now. What about this could be better? Well, you're getting a 2-4, good toughness. You're also getting a 2-1. Terrible toughness, but it has a decent amount of power. The Chillwind Yeti more, li more than likely is gonna be able to survive a little bit more and might be able to kill something a little bit bigger. But the mechanic might be able to kill multiple things a little easier. Or it might be able to bait a little bit more removal or bait them to use their hero power or something like that. So there's a couple, there's just always going to be a trade-off there in these situations. So you kind of want to weigh those things. There's, there's obviously other trade-offs, but for the most part, you want to be looking at this when you're thinking about board state with putting battle cry minions that put dudes into play, okay? Especially if they're just vanilla dudes, um, like a 2-1 that does nothing. Because sometimes they're 2-1s that do something, or 1-1 that does amazing things, like 4 damage to a random enemy minion, or something stupid like that. Dr. Boombot. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at as far as the battle cry taunt, or battle cry minions that build board state. Now let's look at taunt. So, what does taunt do for us? What is the point of taunt? The point of taunt is to bring yourself from behind and kind of put yourself ahead in a weird way. It slows them down and it forces them to deal with, or at least if you're doing it right, it slows them down and forces them to deal with something that they might not necessarily want to deal with. Um, 
sometimes players just want to attack the face and just punch you in the face as many times as they can until you're dead. Top minions obviously stop them from doing that and can bring the board back into your favor. So say say somebody plays a bunch of like Murloc Tidehunters, like two Murloc Tidehunters, right? They've, they've got two turn lock Murloc Tidehunters, so they've got a 2-1, a 2-1, and a 1-1, and a 1-1. That's a total of six power. Um, yeah, it's a total of six power. I had to think about that. And four toughness. 6-4. Not bad. Okay? If you play something like a, you know, a Frostwolf Grunt, yeah, you could stop one of them. But if you play something like a, a Sinjin Shield Master, which is actually a really good taunt minion, you can stop three of them. Okay? You, not only are you stopping three of them, you're removing three creatures from their side of the board, and they're probably wanting those creatures to stay on the board. You're removing those three creatures, they're stuck with one thing left, which is pretty weak, and you have time to then sort of rebuild your board. Um, and that's like a really basic way to look at it. Um, for the most part, you're gonna have something on the board beforehand, before you play like a, a Sinjin Shield Master, and they might have a two and a three drop, like say a Bloodfin Raptor and a um, Iron for Grizzly, let's just go with that. Bloodfin Raptor and Iron for Grizzly. They have to throw both of those minions at your Shield Master in order to kill it. Well, and let's look at these again. So three, two, you know, you deal three damage to it, it dies to the three, three power of the, um, the Shield Master, and then you've got an Iron for a Grizzly. Three, three. It dies to the Shield Master as well, because three toughness. But the Shield Master will die, but at least you've sort of brought yourself back into the game with a solid four drop. Um, sometimes it can even push you even farther ahead. So that that's another good way to sort of look at board state. And now I want to talk about why board state is important and why just attacking the face is a bad idea in the early stages of your Hearthstone game. So this game is sort of built around creature combat. It's it wants it allows you to attack creatures. And if you are making effective trades, if you on your turn are looking at your board and going, okay, so I can take out these creatures and have this one creature survive, you are effectively ahead. You're ahead of them. They have to deal with what you just did. If you are constantly making your opponent deal with what you just did, you are winning the game. If you are allowing them to, to control that sort of aspect of the game, you're probably losing. Um, so any anytime that you have the ability to clear their board or kill their creatures, you should pretty much always be doing that. There are a couple times you don't want to do that, but for the most part, you just want to kill their creatures and be done with it. And um, creature combat is great for that. And, and uh, yeah, so... That's sort of what you're looking at there as far as like what board state is. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna play through a game and sort of go through all these things. But I think that's enough on board state for right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the video off here. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.